Welcome to the 14th round of the HHCC Historic Formula Ford 1600 Championship. Uh, coming from the Brands Hatch Indy Circuit. This meeting, the HSCC Anglo French meeting, the French Formula Ford competitors, also racing over the weekend. So, both on Saturday evening and on Sunday morning, there was a get together. The French series catered for slightly newer cars than the, the UK series. It was Mike Gard, another one, both of their races. But it's for the UK race for us it's the results of race one yesterday's race that will settle the grid for today's race 25 cars expected to take the start it'll be Michael Malik yesterday's race winner that will start from pole position that close battle he had with Callum Grant and it will be, of course, therefore Grant alongside him for the start of the race. You see some marshals having to do some clear up work prior to the race after the Alfa Romeo uh, Moniz Club, where he's put a bit of oil down on the circuit. But cars on their green flag lap there next. You see Malik and Grant on the front row. James Buckton, he got that third position towards the end of that first race. Here start there on the inside of road two alongside him, Max Bartel. Bartelli won. Uh, started on the front row yesterday and slowly dropped down to fourth position. Will Nuttall and Simon Toyn on the third row. With Simon Brown there starting September. Seven cars yesterday made a break to the rest of the field, so kind of expect the same thing to happen. This race is slightly longer than usual, it's a 25 minute race. The longest races for the series, longest race in 2014. Um, there's Brown then starting September alongside him, Brian Morris. And he has the French race, uh, Regis Provost starting alongside him oh and next up sorry and alongside him is Dan Pickett and here complete the top 10 then we've got Savents and Stancil Sturmer Stanzel, Wiggins Handel Mansell Slack love it Hellowell Dixon Inez Ponting I don't think he's there Pearson and Williams to make up our 25 car grid the cars are there on the grid wait for the lights to go out as they do now and it's the front engine Malloc that starts second pole position but it's Callum Grant that makes a better start he's coming around the outside of Malloc Malik heading there into Paddock Hill Bend, but Malik takes the lead, but he runs out wide, so Grant looks up on the inside as they climb the hill up towards Druids, and everyone else has made a good start, they've all got going safely, and it's Grant that snatches the lead away from Malik at the hairpin, so it's Callum Grant that leads the way, like he did at this point yesterday, then Malik and Toyne, he's up to Toyne, a very good start from Simon Toyne to get third position. So the field head their way then up towards Surtees uh, for the first lap. You can see the front group all together. Then Will Nuttall, he's um, next up behind James Buckton. Nuttall in fifth position ahead of Bartel. Bartel down to sixth. Not a good start from him. And Simon Brown is in seventh position. I think Brian Morris led the rest of the pack. So completion of lap one. It's, it's Cam Grant that leads, but Michael Malik sliding this car behind him. So the field flow through. It's actually Bones for Benson now. Oh, they're in eight. Head of Brian Morris. And slow they're into shot. Dick Dixon. What's happened there? Let's have a look on board of Dixon then under braking. And the car snaps away. Does a 360 and he continues. Uh, back to the action though. You can see those seven cars all together in one long train. It's Roland Spencer ahead of Brian Morris in eighth and ninth with Fregis Provost behind. In the battle between the two stanzels, it's Kevin ahead of his son Danny in the battle for 11th. On board with John Slack up across the bound straight. In front of him, we've got um, Rowan. Williams in that Coldwell going around the outside of Chris Hellowell and that's a good move from the Coldwell to gain a position remember though Williams coming up from the back of the grid after spinning to the gravel at Paddock Hill Bend yesterday so now we've got is that Matthew Sturmer possibly 
the next car on his list. Grant making a gap now to Michael Malik is trying to break the slipstream. Oh, it's a car off. That's Provost. He's gone straight on there at Surtees. And now will he be able to rejoin the circuit, we wonder? There he is. And yes, it looks like he's going to rejoin, but I do I wonder what happened there. The unusual place to go off. <laughs> On board with Danny Stanzel now. Looking around the outside of his dirt, can't do anything there. He gets to the apex though. Can try and get the run up the hill up towards Druids, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's going underneath the fridge, up on the inside line. His dad leaves him run and he gets the position, but if Kevin stays there around the outside, it'll give him the inside line for Gravel Ben. That's exactly what he's done, so he keeps the position for now. He's clattering the curves on the exit of Grand Hill Bend with Danny there. Into Surtees. Great race yesterday Danny had coming up from near the back of the grid. He's gaining about 10 places over the distance. Which is giving him a better grid position today. Because he can go on definitely this gap to Michael Malik now. He's got a gap back to Simon Toyne and James Buckner. who has no to tell the battle for third. Swenson and Morris still here at it at the in eighth for ninth. And then up to the top ten now. It's Kevin stands all ahead of Danny and Dan Pickett was behind the pair of them. There's Louis Handel on board with Michael Malik. We can go now. He uses loads of curves at Cersei's. Down a gear for clear ways. Trying to latch back onto the back of Callum Grant. Trying to see if he can you um, get back into the slipstream. So into Paddock we go. One handed through Paddock Kill Bend is Michael Malik. Professional sports car racer, GT racer. Won the uh, two race, other races he's competed in this season at Alton Park and yesterday here at Brands. The Callum Grant leading at the moment. So, again, Matt smacks the curve there through Graham Hillburn. Back into the battle between the Stanzels. It's still Kevin ahead of Danny. Runs out wide, clobbers the curve. Through Graham Hillburn. Sit in the slipstream now. Going towards 30. We look to the inside line. Can't do anything there though. Heading into clearways. Danny trying to get the run off of the corner. See the battle continue in front between Morris and Svensson. Here we go then. Using the slipstream going to the outside line for Paddock Kill Bend. Later on the brakes is Danny, he's going to go right round the outside at Paddock, a bit sideways through the corner, using the high wide and handsome line, he gets into the top ten. Will Nuttall chasing after Paddock the third, he's closed them in, it's Simon Toy in the head of James Buckton. Buckton right in the toe though, and he looks to the inside at Paddock. He gets it done, Buckton up to third, and because of that, that's allowing Nuttall to get closer to them. So it's a free car battle now, heading up towards Druids. Twain goes back up on the inside, gets the position back. Nuttall looking to the inside of Buckton. And there's contact there, what's um, loosened the nose cone. I think um, Nuttall's car was airborne ever to slightly, and there goes the nose cone. It falls off on the entrance to Graham Hill Bend. Um, we'll just adjust in his mirror there. He continues though, still in fifth position, but a bit of a bigger gap now to having to close. Back in it, it's Buckton dies to the inside of Toyn at Clearways. He's trying to get third position back. This is allowing Nuttall to close him back in again. Nuttall continuing to adjust his, his mirror there. So up towards Paddock, come back to get the position back. He dies to the inside, there's not much room there. I don't think he's going to get it done or is he? Because Toyn runs a bit wide on the entrance to Paddock, but he can't do it. It's a free card battle again as Nuttall gets involved. He looks to the inside, he goes to the outside. They stay in the same order though. We've got Bartell and, and Brown in this as well. They're just behind. Through Graham Hill Bend. Passing the stricken nose coat. 
still using a lot of road on the exit of the corner there through Surtees from McLaren and then down a gear for clearways toying on the defensive line there both Button and Nuttall looking for a quick run on the exit of the corner through Clark Curve. You can see the three cars all closing in as they use the slipstream as well, heading into Paddock Hill Bend. It's Nuttall that goes to the outside. So Button's going to have to go to the inside. He realised he couldn't go to the outside because that's where, where Nuttall was, but he's got it done nevertheless. Up into third place, he's got James Button and following him through is Will Nuttall. So they both pass Toyn. Toyn down to fifth. It's Button into third and fourth position now for Will Nuttall. Gets in a bit sideways through the Drew Turpin. Here are the leaders together again. Grant has been closed in by Malak. Um, Lafferty started now as well. Buxton drifts his way through. Surtees. It's got Nuts all behind him. And then Simon Brown all over the back of Simon Toyn. And James, uh, Max Bartell on the back of that. So that's third to seventh. All in a nice group. Heading on to the uh, start and finish late. And here's the battle back. Danny Stanzel has closed in Bowdoin Svensson. And has closed in Brian Morris. So that's a trio of cars just ahead of Dan Pickett who goes up on the inside. Dan Pickett's going to gain his place possibly over Kevin Stans. All the two of them are going to run side by side as they go through Clark Curve. On board with Chris Halliwell now coming up across the line towards Paddock Hill Bend. The second half of the field is very well. Who has, he has John Slack go up on the inside. Slack gets on, moved on on the inside at Paddock Hill Bend. Remember, the two leaders will be closing in this battle now. Because also involved in this, a little bit of a queue of cars, in fact. There's also uh, behind Hello oh, is Andrew Mansell, James Lovett, David Innes and Louis Handel. So nice battle this is. Heading on to the Brabham Strait. John Slack trying to break away now from Chris Hallowell. Into Paddock. This time it's Mantle that goes up on the inside to gain a position. So Halliwell lost two places in two laps at Paddock. But he's coming back on Mantle up the hill up towards Druids. Mantle tried to shut the door but Halliwell's on the inside line. And he goes back ahead. He's allowing John Slatton to further out his gap. After making that move on the last lap. Up towards Surtees then, the left-hander, pretty much flat out through there. Halliwell leaving the door open at clearways, but that's because he's trying to take the swooping line through the corner, which will give him more speed through Clark Curve and onto the Brabham Strait. No room for resting around this Brands Hatch Indy circuit. And a, a long race it is too. And James Lovett this time has come through. He squeezed up on the inside there at Paddock. And Andrew Mansell following through now. Up towards Druids. The two of them run side by side through the corner. Mansell gets the place done. And now here comes David Innes. He's side by side into Graham Hill Bend. But Halliwell keeps the inside line. He stays in front. This is a, a great scrapper oh, the, near the rear of the field. You see battles all the way through the field in historic Formula Ford racing. Love it now, starting to break away from this battle. It's again, in it goes up on the inside of Halliwell. He's time he gets the move down. You see the blue flags waving, which means here he is, Callum Grant, the race leader, squeezing up on the inside. And now Halliwell using the slipstream of Innes and goes round the outside of him as Maddock chases Grant into Paddock Hill Bend. He tries to go round the outside to try and get the lead. Can't do it though, so he cuts back. Grant darts in there past the back marker. And that's Andrew Mansell, isn't it? Then Maddock looks to the outside. Can't do it though. Down to Grant Hill Bend now. On board with Maddock. 
Looks to the outside of Grant. Grant defended that though. Got to defend his position and get past his back markers. James Lovett. Grant dies to the inside of. Mallet coming through now. He's trying to use the slip stream of Grant at the same time though. John Slack next. Is there going to catch him at Paddock Hill Bend possibly? So Grant looks to the inside. Slack gave him room. Mallet has to use the curves there. Can't quite find a way past. So he's going to have to do that at Druvids. He does that now. He's gone too deep into the corner though. He runs out wide. He's in the gravel. Michael Mallock in the gravel then. And he's going to get passed again by all of these cars. He's just been lapping on these. He's going to have to do that all over again. He shakes the gravel out of the car. But Callum Grant now has got a much, much bigger lead. He did rejoin in second place nevertheless, did Michael Mallock. He's just too late on the rakes there it seemed. And ran out wide. Bunchen under pressure from Will Nuttall up across the Brabham Strait now. Here comes Nuttall around the outside. About halfway distance. Oh, the two cars came very close together there. Nuttall couldn't do the move around the outside. So, what about in towards Druid? He looks to the outside. And, and Simon toyed up on the inside of Ace Contact with James Buckton. And he spins around as Simon Brown comes through. He gains three places. He was sixth. Now he's third. But contact between Simon Toyn and uh, James Buckton at the hairpin. Let's take another look at that. Toyn was fifth going up the hill. Dived up on the inside and tagged Buckton into a spin. We, uh, Simon Toyn is retiring his car. It's damaged. But James Buckton continuing but much further down the field. Will Nuttall then looking to find a way past Simon Brown. Then nose to tell there. Nuttall's in the slipstream. He goes to the inside line of Brown. Can't find room there though. Slides his way through Paddock Hill Bend. He's right on the gearbox of Brown's car. Brown has to defend the line. Headed up to the hill. But late on the brakes is Nuttall. He's trying to go around the outside. He's on the inside line now as they go down the hill into Grand Hill Bend. That was a great move from Will Nuttall. He kept around the outside of Druids and then came up on the and then came up on the inside for Graham Hill Bend. So, he grants lead now to Malloch. Then, side by side, James Lovett trying to go around the outside of John Slack. Slack stands his ground on the inside and stays in front. And nothing in third. Pulling away from Simon Brown, who's coming under pressure from Max Bartel now. Uh, there's James Buckton recovering. He's in sixth. Then the battle of a seventh. And a spin for Pickett, Dan Pickett. Loops around. Is he going to be able to get back going? He does, but he's lost many of positions. Let's see what happened there then. Hard to diagnose why the car spun from that camera shot. Let's have a look from behind on board with Danny Stanzel. Pick it late on the brakes, in fact, and I think they just got onto, out onto the dirty line on the outside of Paddock. On board of John Slack now, heading down towards Paddock Hill Bend. James Lovett tried this last time. He gets it done, though, this time through Paddock. He was late on the brakes and Slack. So Lovett goes through. He's gained the position there. And now up on the inside, that's Bartel. Bartel lapping John Slack. And then he'll have to lap James Lovett. He'll do that on the run down the Cooper straight. Go to the inside. Good bit of driving from both there. So now is James Lovett going to try and break away from John Slack, possibly? He's trying to do that. Aboard with Danny Stanzel, who's involved in this battle with Roland Spencer, and who gets sideways in front of him. And he goes, Danny goes up on the inside through Clark Curve and gets the move done. Jesse Front as well is Brian Morris, who's in seventh. 
Co. Danny, uh, Danzel. It's Ronan Zaventa actually had a good run down the Brabham straight. Goes round the outside into Paddock. Gets the position back. Danny gets Danny's Danzel hugely sideways. He saves it though. There's the race leader, Callum Grant. Second, Michael Malik. See the car right on the limit through Surtees. There's the noseless Jamin of Will Nuttall and Bartell in fourth. Andrew Mantle over the all over the back of John Slack as well. And off has gone Chris Helliwell. He's he's pulled off there possibly. He's had a spin in fact on the exit of Graham Hill Bend and stalled the car so he clambers out of his car and he's, he's going to push the car to the side of the road good um, thinking there from Chris Halliwell final lap of the race and Callum Grant is going to win again this season the 2014 historic Formula 4 championship he sees a checker flag and he's delighted with that is Callum he wins here that brand's hatch from the penultimate round of the season before we had to Silverstone in a few weeks' time for the HSCC finals weekend. And he won that race by just three and a half seconds in the end as Michael Malik tried to close him down. Third was Will Nuttall. Max Bartel finished in fourth as Simon Brown retired with a few laps to go. So, um, James Buxton come up to fifth and Brian Morris sixth. Brian Svensson and Danny Stanzel, the last two cars not to get lapped. Um, Kevin Stanzel and... Uh, Daniel Pickett rounded off the top 10. There were a couple of cars got disqualified uh, for being underweight, I believe. Champ chip then. Ben Sims, so he's a champion. He went here this weekend. Max Bartel in second with a 22-point leader, James Buckton. So that'd be interesting going to Silverstone. With Callum Grant, also possible to get into the top three ahead of Buckton. And Michael O'Brien's fifth. Brian Morris, Simon Toy, and Percy Kaviri, Will Nuttall and Michael Malloch are the top 10 in the championship.